Hello, my name is Emily Stasco, and as a registered dietitian, I am very passionate about food and healthy eating. Um, with my current job in my clinic that I go to each week, I see firsthand just how important the social determinants of health are and how they really play a role in what people choose to eat each day. Um, from, for my practicum experience, I've been working with a nonprofit called Common Threads. Um, so they work to teach um, very basic cooking skills and nutrition education to children and their families. So this summer I was involved with their nutrition education program for students participating in Pittsburgh's, um, the Pittsburgh Public Schools summer program called Boost. Uh, if you go to slide two, you will see just a couple of the different roles that I had throughout my entire practicum experience. Um, I assisted with um, revising the Boost curriculum, so helping to provide whether it was grammatical changes or also making sure the nutrition information was correct and also help to revise the workbooks that the students would be using. I created a resource hub for the nutrition educators, so created a place on the Google Drive where they could have all of their information all stored into one. And that was also where the survey was housed. So I created a survey for the educators and helped analyze that data to see um, how effective the nutrition um, curriculum was for the students. And then because this um, program took place in Pittsburgh, which is where I'm located, I got to be there on site and serve a supervisory role for the BOOST program throughout the month of July. So if you go to slide three, you will see the different competencies for um, Liberty University, and this was for the foundational competencies. The first one being that by week 10 of the practicum, the student will have written a nutrition-related blog post for the website, which I did do. By week 13 of the practicum, the student will be able to draw appropriate inferences about program implementation and effectiveness based on responses from at least 75% of the nutrition educators as measured by weekly survey data. And by the end of the practicum, the student will be able to disseminate their findings on program effectiveness through completing a presentation with program staff, which will actually take place this upcoming week. If you go to slide four, you will see the concentration competencies. So two of them, the first being that by week five of the practicum, the student will be able to utilize their nutrition knowledge and apply principles of nutrition to health promotion through revising the BOOST program curriculum and workbooks. And by the end of the practicum, the student will be able to utilize their findings from weekly surveys to provide at least two suggestions for interventions prior to the nutrition program's next initiative. Slide five talks about the design of the survey, basically the timeline and um, things that were taken into consideration um, throughout the survey creation. So the survey was created with the help and guidance of my preceptor. Her name is Shayna, and she's actually the VP of Research and Development at Common Threads. So I would create the questions, and she would look through them and provide suggestions and comments, questions, and we would kind of together revise those to really finalize them and make sure they were answering the overall or related to the overall research questions that we had. I created the final survey, which was in Google Forms, and it was housed in the Google Drive that the nutrition educators had. And I updated it each week to contain the names of the different lessons that the students were completing throughout the weeks. Finally, I helped analyze that da data and disseminate the results to both Shana and also um, the the staff member who was involved with the curriculum development and the program coordinator for Pittsburgh. So if you go to slide six, you will see the accomplishments and I kind of broke it down for what the students were able to accomplish, what Common Threads was able to accomplish and what I myself was able to accomplish. So the students were able through completing this program to try different fruits and vegetables, um, be exposed to new foods, that um, in particular may have came through with the cultural unit in the second half of the program. They may try things they've never heard of or seen before. And they were also learning how to follow a recipe and work together as a group to create that recipe. 
for common threads, they were able to um, get some recommendations for the curricula improvement to make the content easier for students to understand in the future. And for myself, I was able to put into practice methods in the different research methods in public health that I've learned through my previous coursework. So being able to create that survey, was I looking for qualitative data, quantitative data, how was I going to assess it, and assessing it and then disseminating those findings to common threads. And to the right, you'll just see a picture of one of the projects that they did throughout the program. They had the option to create, if it were younger kids, maybe the pre-K, they could create um, spaghetti art and um, either write or explain like why they, they drew themselves looking that way. So that was just one that I thought was cute. But if you go to slide seven, you will see the recommendations going forward. So I do think one major area for improvement would be having different lessons for each individual grade level. Um, right now, the way that it was, the um, grade levels were grouped between pre-K to third grade. So all of those students, which were what was entirely throughout the BOOST curriculum this summer, or the BOOST program this summer, all of those students got the same curriculum. Um, but I really think there's an area for improvement there. They should be broken down between each grade level because the pre-K is going to be vastly different from the third grade. <laughs> um, Pre-K, they may not be able to even read or write, so they have very different needs compared to some of the older students. Um, I do also think they should consider the addition of mindfulness with eating into their curriculum. This is just something, as a dietitian, I'm coming more across intuitive eating and mindfulness. Um, and I think this would be really helpful for that pediatric population, and it can kind of be taught in a way of increasing their awareness with internal eating cues when they're eating, and um, maybe it can be explained through the different senses to them. Finally, I think the cultural unit should be revised to make it easier for the students to understand. So maybe instead of just going each day to different countries, they could start with local geography, whether it's Pittsburgh or whatever city they're in, or if it's um, just the U.S. geography before they go to different countries. I think having that or ensuring they have that baseline knowledge of local geography may be an easy way to teach it first. Um, I do also think that cultural workbooks could have... Um, more pictures and less text just to make it um, more engaging for the students. And in slide eight, you'll see the lessons that I've learned throughout this um, survey. And this is particular to the survey, but one challenge that I really didn't anticipate was the low response rate among the nutrition educators. So, um, you know, I was involved frequently throughout this. I was there to explain um, the reasoning behind the, the survey and how they complete the survey, answer all questions on the survey as part of their training. Um, and then each week they did receive an email that would remind them to complete the survey. So with those things in place, I really thought, you know, everyone would be completing it. A little naive of myself to think that, but, um, you know, I really didn't anticipate having a, a lower response rate. So um, that was one thing that I really learned you can't expect everyone to do everything as they're told it um, you know you should expect lower than that and I also do think one lesson that I learned is that I don't love Google Forms um, I think for creating surveys in the future it may be better to use Qualtrics um, the Google Form I like to use because it was on the same mode or it could also be in the the resource hub the Google Drive that the nutrition educators use so they could on Friday submit their receipts from the ingredients that they bought and they could also complete the survey at the same time so I liked that aspect of it um, but actually changing the questions each, each week was difficult um, it was difficult to create a ranking question I had to manually do a lot of changes and um, the results from there were hard to, to disseminate so it still required some manual work. So that is something going forward I would recommend using a Qualtrics survey over Google Forms. But I really took a lot away from this experience and my practicum. Um, I learned firsthand how, how important the nutrition is for students and just proper ways to, to teach them and the way that a survey can be implemented and how that really helps um, with program development and making sure that programs 
are effective in doing what they say they're doing. So I really enjoyed this practicum experience and I look forward to, to any more experiences I can get in the public health realm in the future.